Today, we are all comfortable with the fact that each black note on the piano has two names, a sharp and a flat one. But this has not always been the case. Indeed, this only occurred with the introduction of equal temperament tuning. For most of music history, sharps and flats were different. We can demonstrate this by using Pythagorean tuning, which we discussed in previous videos. Pythagorean tuning uses intervals of perfect fifths to tune notes. Starting on the note C, we can tune up or clockwise through the circle of fifths, giving us sharp notes. But we can also tune down or anti-clockwise through the circle of fifths to give us flat notes. Now remember that to find the note a perfect fifth above, we multiply by 3 on 2, and to find the note an octave above, we multiply by 2 on 1. Conversely, to find the note a perfect fifth below, we divide by 3 on 2, and to find the note an octave below, we divide by 2 on 1. Now let's tune our note C to 100 Hz, just for simplicity. Let's now find the notes G sharp and A flat above this C. To find the note G sharp, we start on the note C and we go up by fifths, dropping down an octave occasionally to stay within a one octave range of our note C. Whereas to find the note A flat, we start on the C and we go down by fifths, rising up an octave to stay within the same octave range. Now doing this, notice that G sharp is 160.2 Hz, while A flat is 158.0 Hz. So they are not quite the same note. Let's do another one. C sharp is 106.8 Hz, and D flat is 105.4 Hz. Again, doesn't quite line up. And you can do this same process for any note, and you will always find the same issue the frequency of the sharp note is slightly higher than the frequency of the flat note. This is shown here. Now this also means that we now have the notes E sharp and C flat as distinct and separate notes. And let's not even begin to talk about double flats and double sharps. And you'll notice the same problem with other tuning systems as well. In the previous video, we also looked at quarter comma mean tone tuning. The same notes and their related frequencies using this tuning is displayed here. Note this time though, the sharp notes have a lower frequency than their enharmonic flat notes. Now going back to Pythagorean tuning, for those of you who watched my previous videos on tuning systems, you'll know that Pythagorean tuning is not consistent. When we went all the way around the circle of fifths, we didn't end up back on our original note an octave higher. If our original note was 100 Hz, an octave above that should be 200 Hz. But we find that when we go all the way through the circle of fifths, we actually get to 202.7 Hz, slightly more than an octave. This is expressed mathematically as follows, and in English all this means is 12 fifths does not equal 7 octaves. And we saw that the difference between these two octave frequencies is called the Pythagorean comma, and it's 531441 on 524288. Well, if we take the difference between the notes G sharp and A flat, we of course again find that it varies by the Pythagorean comma. And this is precisely because it is effectively like going all the way round the circle of fifths. Going clockwise, we find the sharp variant of the note, and anti-clockwise, we find the flat variant of the note. So we've effectively done the full circle of fifths from both sides. Now, it was only with widespread adoption of equal temperament tuning in around the 19th century that we united flat and sharp notes, such that we now have only one frequency for both notes. Before this time, instruments with fixed notes, like the keyboard, often added more black notes to account for the different sharps and flats. Such an instrument is called an enharmonic keyboard. While this produced more consonant intervals that are closer to their true frequency ratio as determined by the harmonic series, this came at the cost of greater complexity. 
you now had more than 12 notes per octave. Now, alternately, you could simply omit some of the black notes and keep the others, say by omitting all the sharps and keeping only flat notes. So we would keep A flat, but not G sharp. This makes the piano more user-friendly and playable, but at the expense of consonants, as we'll see in a future video.